Okay, YouTubers, I'm doing a two inch bracket lift on my 1999 Honda 300. I think it can be done without taking all the plastic off the front. I just thought it'd make it a lot easier, especially doing a video. So up to this point, I basically unbolted the rack from the rack mounting points, removed it, took the plastic off. I'm sure there's plenty of videos on that stuff out there. I don't have to go over all that. Uh, and I took the upper shocks mounts loose, took the bolts out. Now the bracket, basically you pull this little retainer that used to hold the plastic and stuff to this cross beam, cross bar, whatever you want to call it. Take those out on both sides. The bracket just sits here and the bolt goes in place on top. Now, something I noticed, my kit didn't come with a whole lot of hardware, but you notice how it's hard to hold this stuff in the camera at the same time. You notice how that hole's a little bit smaller than this one. So, what I did was I went with the, the bolt and washer on top because of the, the large hole on top. Fat ugly hand in there, okay. And then I just put the nut on the bottom because the the base of the nut is um, big enough; it's not going to pull through the hole. So washer is not really required on the bottom. Uh, I'm going to be splicing this video together as I get stuff done. I just wanted to stop at this point and kind of get a shot and explain why I've got a one washer on top, no washer on bottom. So you see the orientation of the brackets as well. Okay, so the next step in the instructions after you drop the top bolt in and get the nut start on the bottom, but you leave it loose, is to put this little spacer in place. Now I had to put a bar in here and kind of spread just ever so slightly to get the spacer in. Uh, and then you put the replacement bolt through the hole with the spacer to keep this from crushing. And then you simply put the shock back in. All this stuff up to this point, you've left loose. Then you put the shock back in. I had to add three spacers here in the front, three of the washers out of the kit. There's only two washers left in the kit of this size. I'll find another one of my bucket of bolts. Then you put the original bolt back in and tighten everything up. Starting with the top one, then this one in the middle, and then the, the main bolt. So I want to do the same thing on the other side. And the front lift is done. Now you'll notice, I didn't mention earlier, I put all the washers in front of the shock. Uh, when I added that, when I added the shock in and put the bolt in. The reason for that is, sorry, I'm a little out of breath. When I laid the shock into the, the opening here, it seemed to lay naturally more towards the back. And so I don't like to put anything in a bind when I'm working on it, like brackets and whatnot. So I went ahead and stuck all the shim, the shim washers in the front. So. That should take care of the front end of our two inch lift on our Honda 300. I'll go ahead and put the plastic and stuff back on before I start on the rear. Okay, one note worthy of mentioning. Uh, when I went to put my plastic back on, I realized all these panels were kind of in a, a weird way. Uh, that's because I didn't reattach them down the original holes. It doesn't say anything in the instructions about actually removing that tab and putting the bolt back through the same hole with all that stuff. And it may not be what they intended, but that's what I did. Uh, I like for all my stuff to sit in the right spot where it's supposed to be, so. I want to make a note of that. Now, I didn't take everything loose, but because it was all loosened or tightened up with all the hardware in place, when I loosened up this bolt, it came right out, didn't have to fight it or anything. Okay, so the rear lift install is pretty simple. I just put a jack underneath my hitch ball here, jacked up the four-wheeler, blocked it up underneath the midsection, unbolted the shock from the base here, lift the jack back down, the lower end, the, uh, the rear end dropped away from the shock. Then I removed the upper shock mounts, just from right here. Um, then it calls for removing a bolt from the the underside right here in the middle where you see this new nuts at. You pull the bolt out of the bottom, they got a supply bolt that goes back in, it's a little bit longer. 
you drop the bracket in place, put the nut on, tighten it up, and then it said just drop this bolt in. But this bolt, when you tighten up the nut, it had the bracket kind of out of place where it wouldn't go. So I had to kind of beat around on it with a hammer a little bit to get it in line, and then just kind of crank the bolt on in with a ratchet. All right, I'm starting to pull that side in, so I'm gonna loosen back up just a little bit. The bracket started closing up on me. Okay. Well, I may have to thread that back out. When I got it all the way up against here, it started pulling this side of the bracket back in. It was threading on the, on the, uh, you know what? I'm just gonna put something in there to spread it so I can get the shock in. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm just gonna bottom this back out. Matter of fact, I'm not gonna bottom that out anymore. I'm gonna put the nut on the other side and let it tighten it up. Anyhow, yeah, I'm gonna put the nut on this side, let it pull the bolt through the rest of the way, and hopefully that'll pull this back over where it needs to be. You can see a little gap right in here, right there. See my finger crossing it. So hopefully when uh, the bolt comes back over because I was putting a nut on, tighten it up, it'll pull this back. Either way, it's thin enough I can get the shock back in. Once I get this tightened up with a nut on there, the next step is to grind a little bit of the width off of the shock here, the bushing that's actually inside the shock. See this part right here? Just make it a little narrower so it'll go in between here and then bolt it all back together using the original hardware. And there's the final assembly, everything reattached. And on the 300, two inch lift kit done. I didn't get any before measurements, but my last 300 had a, basically the same bracket lift done on it. And it was a noticeable increase. I can already tell there's a noticeable difference. It might actually go more than two inches actual finished. The amount of lift. So I guess the next thing for this one will be some floorboards. So I got more area to put my feet and so Ashley has more area to put her feet when we're riding. I'm gonna do a set of two inch spacers. Give a little bit wider stance, uh, make it a little more stable. Uh, Cause we do more mountain riding than we do any kind of mud holes. I hate mud. And go from the 25 inch tires up to 28s. So there'll be a little more ground clearance, a little more width. I think I'm gonna do a valve adjustment too. This is an old four wheeler I bought off somebody and it's rattling a little bit. So let's get in there. Have a good little ride for the mountains. Thanks for watching.